Good morning, dear friends. We are beginning this Mass of Friday, the 12th of June, 10th week, of, 10th week in ordinary time. <clears throat> in today's Mass, I continue to pray for you and for your families and pray for the intentions you will bring up here today. But today I want to offer Mass too for a cousin of mine who passed away some years ago. Kennedy Bima passed away on this day. We ask that God may grant him rest and peace, that God may continue to bring comfort to the family. I'd also like to offer this Mass for a dear friend, Deacon John Lynch, who is undergoing a medical procedure. I pray for God's intervention. I pray for God's healing. Also pray for his family at this time. I pray for those whose marriages and families are in dire stress or state, and I ask for prayers. Pray for God to intervene and to help them find a way to resolve those conflicts. Here in our hospital, we continue to pray for our sick, pray for our doctors and our nurses, and pray for all those who provide care, and pray for their families. Let us go to God with the hymn, City of God. Awake from your slumber, arise from your sleep, a new day is dawning for all those who weep. The people in darkness have seen a great light. The Lord of our longing has conquered the night. Let us build a city of God. May our tears be turned into dancing. For the Lord, our light and our love, has turned the night into day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and with your spirit. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves for this Mass, and to bring your intentions to God, let us call to mind our sins, and take our sins away from him, that these blessings may find us in our needs. For the times we failed to trust you enough, O oh God, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For the times we did not see your effect in our own lives and use it, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the times our struggles have blinded us to the hope your call holds for us, we are sorry. Lord, have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins. May he bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your promptings discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. But the word of the Lord came to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. 
After the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood out at the entrance of the cave. A voice said to him, Elijah, why are you here? He replied, I have been most zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. But the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. The Lord said to him, Go to take the road back to the desert near Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel as king of Aram. Then you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nashni, Nimshi, as king of Israel, and Elijah, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abed Meloha, as prophet to succeed you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, I long to see your face, O Lord. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of you my heart speaks, you my glance seeks. I long to see your face, O Lord. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not, do not in your anger repel your servant. You are my helper. Cast me not off. I long to see your face, O Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Shine like light on the world as you hold on to the word of life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I'd like to reflect with you from the first reading and also the Gospel reading. There is a trick that I see in these readings that I hope to project for our reflection. I'm sure you know 
that this passage comes after Elijah had overpowered 400 prophets of Baal. And that, of course, ignited rage in all of those who felt like their way of life was under attack and scrutiny. And so everyone subject to Baal, of course the queen, was seeking the life of Elijah. Now we know that the desire to be alive, the desire for life, is very strong. And so Elijah is on his run, or on the run for his life. So he runs. At this point, he is not dependent on God. He is dependent on his own abilities. I'm sure he felt like, he felt desolate, like God was not having his back. And he had to take his own life in his hands and to protect himself and to shield himself, especially after what he had seen to all the other prophets. Hear what he said. He said, the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, turned down your altars, and put all your prophets to the sword. I alone am the one left. So, so he had seen a lot of horror. He had seen a lot of terrible things happen to God's chosen prophets. He wasn't having it anymore. And so he could not trust that God will have his back. Why? Because he was going off on what he had seen happen to others. If God sat down where he was and saw all of this happen to these others, what chance do I have? I better protect myself. I might do a better job than God. That was his reasoning. So what does he do? He runs and hides in a cave. Now, sometimes, maybe right now, you are in a cave because of how you feel. You feel desolate. You feel alone. You feel abandoned. You feel like no one cares about you. God doesn't seem to answer because you've been praying for this thing and nothing is happening. It's almost, like, it's almost like God is deaf. Don't forget, Elijah had just seen the miracle of God a few, a few days earlier when he prayed that God, if you exist, consume this offering. And God showed that he exists and he can do the impossible. But immediately, his life was in danger. He forgot that this God can do the impossible. And how often do we behave like that? Where we move as though our moods move from one moment where I feel the power of God, I feel his comfort, I feel his consolation to another moment where I feel alone, desolate, and abandoned. You know, as if God doesn't exist anymore. And so, now, Elijah was running away from God. What does that remind you? Remind you of how Adam and Eve, our first parents, were running away from God. And God shows up. He shows up in a gentle way. Scripture says, Go outside and stand on the entrance before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. I like those words. And I, I will say those words to you. I, I don't know where you are right now in your own life based on everything that is happening around you. But if it's possible that you are taking your own life in your own hands and not trusting God any longer, or feeling like God doesn't care about you any longer, or feeling like maybe God has too many more things to do than you, that you are not significant a lot enough to get his attention. I will say this to you too. Leave that place. Go and stay in a place. The Lord is passing by. And he's passing by for you. He's passing by you. Because he wants to prove a point to you. That he is never too far, never too busy, never lacking of resources. After all, he is the God who created everything there is. And you are just a little piece of all of that. And so Elijah goes out and the Lord shows up. Says, this is not for you. The cave, you cannot be in a cave. You know, ju just think about you running away from a house or running away from everything else and hiding in a cave. Just think about the contrast. 
and there are so many of us who will bring ourselves only because we don't have trust any longer bring ourselves to a situation of existence that is just too demeaning for God's children Elijah was now a cave only look yeah it's it's an extreme danger that we, we go to caves God says no you're not living in a cave there are many more important and valuable plans I have in your life now you just get up and take the road back in the desert near Damascus and when you go back you begin to set up set up the house of God again it says first anoint Hazel as king Jehu as king of Israel Elisha as prophet so he says begin to set up again God's government and he went back and did exactly that and, and I will say to you if you are desolate and feeling alone right now come back present yourself to God and ask God God what I see you do doing in the life of Elijah I want to see it today in my own life I feel exactly as he felt show me that you care about me show me that I matter to you now it's possible as we see from the gospel reading that there may be something that is making it impossible to you. Scripture says, if your right hand causes you to sin, I would like to reframe that. If there is anything in your life that makes it impossible for you to see the workings of God in your life, that needs to go down. Because until that fence goes down, you are unable to see how God is unfolding in your life every day. And right now, he is doing something you may not be able to see it, but he is doing something. You need to lay down whatever it is that makes it impossible for, for you to see what God is doing and why it is so easy for you to focus on what God is not doing when God is busy doing something for you right now. And so we pray, dear friends, that God who has chosen us, he called us and chose us as his own, may reveal to us how much he values us and what wonderful plans he has for us and that we are never alone because he promised it. May God who is ever present, may God who is ever compassionate, ever loving, may God who is ever providing, provide for you in every good way. As always, I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you, you are still the delight of the Almighty God and that God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most merciful God, the times where our lives can be so stressful, so fearful, so uncomfortable, the times where we lose our ability to even trust or believe in ourselves, or believe in you, or believe that what the world provides is good enough for ourselves. At those times, oh God, we feel desolate, we feel fearful, we lose our trust and our confidence. We beg you, open our hearts to see what the Almighty sees and to hear what the Almighty hears. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Amen. hear our prayer. Our Father's Mass, O God, for Kennedy Binan, who passed away several years ago. I ask, dear God, that you may find him worthy to share peace with you, that you may bring comfort and healing to every heart that grieves. I pray for the dear friend John Lynch. I ask Almighty God that you may help John as he goes through this medical procedure, provide guidance and provide inspiration to doctors and surgeons who work on him. I pray Almighty God for patients in our hospital here. I ask that you may be with them and that you may hear our prayers for them, that you may help them find healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for others who have brought their intentions to you this day, whether they are here in our hospital or around the world, that you, O oh God, who is compassionate and loving, may hear those concerns and address them for their needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray, Almighty God, for people who are sick with coronavirus, especially those in critical care around the world, 
May your grace be granted to them for healing. I pray, Almighty God, for those who have lost jobs, those who are in danger of losing more because of this problem. May you show yourself in their lives today, O oh God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us ask our Blessed Mother to pray with us and for us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made, which will become a bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed thy Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual thing. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you, and lead us to grow in charity. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned in mercy, you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we are flamed. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread. In giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. We bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Kennedy Vina, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died 
in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of that peace. And from me to all of you, may God's peace be with you now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Now, in this time of spiritual communion, we lift our hearts and our minds to God. Dear God, visit us in our cave. Come to us in that place of fear and anxiety and doubt. And please, nourish our lives with this Eucharist. May this spiritual communion transform us and make us hopeful, helpful, and faithful. Make us, O oh God, be what you created us for. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Let us pray. May your healing work, O oh Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to what is right. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Cast into hell, Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the rings of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us at this Mass. I pray that God may reveal himself in a more compelling and a more um, effective way, just so that you realize you're never alone, never. It doesn't matter how much the devil tries to deceive us that we are alone. 
he never came home. God is with us. The Lord be with you. Through the prayers of our blessed mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our, opening, our closing hymn will be the summons. Will you come and follow me if I bid call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I did call your name? Will you grab for growth and kind and never be the same? Will you reach the hostile still? Should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayers in you and you? in